Representing Gin Air Green Wings, though, in the top right hand side is the red Protoss player, Creator. And the bottom left hand side, we do have our blue Terran player from Team GP, Bomber. Man, I'm struggling a bit today, guys. I like my, my, it's a little bit hot in my room. It's a little bit kind of like a little bit tired. Like, it's just like, oh, what's going on today? I'm trying to open my window to get, uh, trying to open my window to get some air in. There's just no air blowing in. It's just like a completely still day outside. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so we set up a probe from Creator, hands down to the bottom left-hand side. Streamers can no longer decide when to put ads. No, I can decide when to put ads, but Twitch will also select certain viewers if they didn't experience an ad break, and they will force an ad break on them. So it doesn't really matter for me. Like, like, it, it matters for my channel less than others because I run ad breaks anyway. So if you tune into the stream from the start, it's not really a problem, but the problem still stands. If someone tunes in just after the ads finish at the start of a series, they can, you know, imagine we're going up into the, you know, the end of game two, and it's like a sick epic moment, and Twitch can be like, oh, we're going to run some ads for you. And then it's like, well, that kind of sucks, right? That's just dumb. Like, it's, I'm super responsible with my ads. And I always put breaks in, and like, you know, sometimes you miss the th first 30 seconds of a game, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I choose when to put the breaks in. You're, it's, I'm never talking during a break. There's no gameplay on the screen during a break. It is a break stream. And I think it's really insulting that Twitch is just going to kind of randomly run ads to people and then take away what has been me being extremely responsible with my ads for years and years. I think it's really stupid. So uh, that's why ads free viewing is now enabled for subs until the end of October, at least. It's a little bit of a trial run on my end to see how it goes. But um, yeah, we just, just made sense to try it out a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. Hey, thank you so much, News Anchor, for the 10 month Prime sub. It says thanks for the stream. Thank you so much for the resub. Thank you so much, Rero75, for the 9 month resub. With the Warty Hearts right back at you. And thank you so much, Avenging Pass, for the 4 month resub on the Prime. Saying, let's go, Jinna. Cheering on Creator here, then. As it's 2 2, of course, and one of this map gets the chance to close the series out. If they, whoever goes 2 0 here. Wins this series for the team 1 1, obviously, and we get that ever elusive ace match, that game seven, that we were absolutely not expecting to have happen today. Up to Creator moving up into the upper right hand side. There's extra gates coming through. War Prism getting started as well. War Prism already on the way out. That charge is coming into play. The extra gates. I mean, there's a lot of gates from Creator with that fast charge. Definitely just aggro. We see this uh, fair amount, this kind of fast charge, War Prism into the main business. You can get eight zealots, say charge off into the main. Your opponent isn't prepared. It can end the game because obviously, if they're not positioned in the right place, you know you can get around on units. There's a lot of things that can go very wrong here for the um, for the Terran player very quickly. And I'm a little bit afraid for Bomber right now. He's got a lot of Marines, but especially in the main, right? They're not supported by anything. They're not kind of backed into a corner. They're just in the mineral line. He does end up canceling the turret. There's a couple of units at home defense. How many zealots we got? We've actually got two zealots that are going to charge the front. I don't like that. I actually would have preferred everything to just be in this war prism to go straight to the main. The mine dropping off and just looking to do a bit of damage here. We do just see the war zealots in the natural. This is what I mean. I just feel like they were never meant to really do anything. And now, Bunker set up. Good read from Bomber. He's actually set up perfectly against this wall off. Marines are behind the wall. Zealots won't do anything. So yeah, this setup will not do much at all. Really good defensive setup. 
Freda will just try and take a third base behind it, but I kind of like where it is for Bummer right now. It's a good initial defense. Creators build a super early charge that will not be useful now. I mean, charge is still good in the game in general, right? But early charge means you don't have, you know, that drop defense that Blink gives you, that mobility that Blink gives you. There's a lot of problems with it as the Widow Mine connects on the War Prism for just a moment, and that's going to be a low HP War Prism now that has to be very careful of adventuring back into the main base. Widow Mine drop trying to come back in, but not really finding anything. We'll try the main base. Let's Widow Mine unload. And Adept goes in. That's a couple of probes then, the end of Widow Mine. That will be it. It will go down, and Bomb is already pulling the medivac away. So he kind of knows as well. As Freda will start up his first Colossus. Forty, how will it have to go so I keep this set in beyond October? Honestly, I don't know. I think... I, I, I need to see how much it affects the ad revenue. Because ad revenue is actually a pretty big deal for me. Because I do run a reasonable amount of ads. Like, I do kind of rely on ad revenue to make my income and to, you know, be able to justify support in tournaments and stuff. It allows me to put a dollar into, you know, from every sub into the tournament price pool guaranteed, if not more. Because the ad revenue makes up some income that I can actually use to pay my bills and stuff. So, I need to make sure there's not, a, like, a significant decrease in ad revenue. As well as maybe seeing a bit of an increase in subs from it. Um, it's kind of hard to judge, but it's possible. Um... So yeah, just like I, do, I don't really know right now. I'm just gonna kind of have a look at the different stats after after a month or so. It'll be interesting to see how much it's affected. Last time I tested it, it seemed to have a pretty serious effect though. I also have more viewers now, so who knows? Good time. I just took a drink of my drink. And it's done down my throat the wrong way. Just as probes are about to blow up. This is a cute idea. Trying to use the Colossus Splash by killing his own probe. In the end, this Widowmine goes off. There's still one Widowmine here. Hopefully, Creator realizes that. Otherwise. Okay, Observer came out. He just cleaned it up. Otherwise, I could have been a lot more dead workers. Hey, Bomber's going onto the map. Obviously, Creator's only got two Colossi. I actually kind of feel... Bomber can make something of a push right now. Sorry, my, I've got hiccups. God damn it. Um... Bomber's kind of just playing Mass Bio, which is pretty interesting. This is kind of cool, actually, as you're going to see this prism. It's going to get stuck, so it will go down. Honestly, Bob was playing Mass Bio, which has me a little bit concerned, but... At the same time, for the moment, I kind of don't mind it. It's just, I know this is what Bomber likes to do, and I feel like this can be his downfall as well. Let's plus one armor finishes. Let's see what he can do with an attack. Man, Crater's on the map. I don't know if this is good or bad for Crater, because he's going to kind of swoop in as the Terran has just moved up the high ground. Oh, well, the Terran player is going to find a Colossus for free. And now can continue towards the third base. Well, Creator's actually going to come in from behind while warping in from the third. So, this might actually work out a bit differently now. Bummer's going to see the army on the other side of him. <laughs> well, what's good for Bummer is he can kind of force the fight by going down and kind of, you know, fighting one of these bases. He can pretty much make the uh, opponent come back. He actually stimmed his entire army, though, just to fight these zealots, including the units that weren't even nearby. <clears throat> his fourth base will go down. Let's see how Stork is continuing through Colossi setting up and our bio army coming straight in. Nexus goes down already. Cancels a CC. I mean, you've already killed a third base here, but if you just hold the natural, this is totally doable. He's going to come straight into the natural of his opponent. Oh, Storm's about to be done. Is the High Templar? Is a High Templar in the main? A little bit concerning. I was actually going to run into this fight, and I actually do think he's got enough to fight this off. And he ends up backing away. I'm a bit worried about that because his medevacs are low energy, so he doesn't have a lot of healing left. I'm worried about this main base because there's a storm available to help defend it. 
Farmer 2, 1 upgrades against 1-1. One, one. He comes in, Colossal go down straight away, so he will win this fight easily on this side of the map. As he does get up this ramp, the storm is disgusting. That is the only storm available, and there's no other splash damage. These Marines are kind of okay. Obviously, a little bit of a shame that there's no real healing left. The Bomber's going to put Team GP on a match point. And at the very least, Team GP are going to get an ace match out of this series. Oh my god, it's happening! I said it would be nice for Rogue to take the 2-0 to put, you know, Jenner on, you know, to put Creator only needing to go 1-1. Because I think it's possible Bomber wins a map and Bomber wins the first map. But now, Team GP are in the lead. Rogue obviously was meant to 2-0. And well, Kareda is not meant to lose 0-2 to Bomber, I can tell you that much as well. On the bottom left-hand side, our blue Terran player is from Team GP, Bomber. Up against the red Protoss in the bottom right, Creator. Map 6 of this best of 7. Created a very early probe to the top of the map to put some pressure on with something of a proxy. Early in game 6. First pylon already down. That pro moves its way over, gonna go up into the main. Yeah, Rex, Depot, obviously a full wall up here from Bombers. He's playing some man games of his own. If he expands high ground, this is so bad for Coretta because he's going double gateway. If Bomber expands high ground, which I think he's gonna, no, he's gonna factory. He's gonna factory first, but even just factory first is really good for Bomber here. This is a huge blind count of uh, advantage from the start. Gateway building in that upper left hand side. The probe is going to go back along over to the far right. Off goes the probe, man. This Marine's going to scout this as well. Bomber is just like. Everything's going right for him. In the last game, in this game already. Already a bit shocked, guys. Stalker gonna move up. He can target down this SCV, but the Widow Mine should be able to force the Stalker back. Widow Mine just needs to move into position over here. No, he's not gonna show it. Uh, I feel like that's silly. There's no reason not to put the Widow Mine down there. How are you gonna lose a Marine as well? I mean, that's because of a bad rally, but like, you should have just put the Widow Mine there. I don't think hiding a Widow Mine does that much for you. He goes to Armory, so he's going to get cloaked. Widow Mines being cloaked. Widow Mines against the Stargate. I guess it depends on if the Oracle comes out first or not. It could just be straight into Phoenix. This is straight into Phoenix. I mean, you can at least still build an Oracle behind this, right? So you can still have a response to this. Medivac from Bomber out down the bottom side. Probe out over the left side. I mean, I just don't know what the next step is. Apparently, it's a Thor from Bomber. <laughs> We saw this in Dreamhack. Um, Future versus M. Canyon. Future brought out a Thor. 
Bernie also did a Thor against SOS in the um, War Chest Team League. Probably gets pushed away. Phoenix is uh, moving around. But the mine's going in for some extra kills right now, so and a little bit more done. The Marine's going to move up and going to get a little bit more done in their way through this pylon. Shutting down a gateway. SCVs are going to pull. The Thor drop is coming. Is the Thor in the right mode? Obviously, you need the Thor in the right end. Oh, you see the SCVs being pulled. I mean, that's huge. Immediately, Creator starts up a shield battery. Thor drops down. I mean, there's an immortal out. Immortal should be big here. Obviously, just having shield batteries in general is massive. SCVs are going to pull up. SCVs can repair this Thor. What else is going to rally across the map? A few more Marines. There is a second Thor in production. Hey, SCVs actually need to get on top of the Thor, though. Right now, the Thor is not being repaired properly. It's not getting fully surrounded. Bomber's just going to let the Thor die. This push is over. Yeah, this was badly controlled. You're meant to have a full SCV surround on the Thor. He didn't have enough repairing being done. That's a sad way to, uh, to lose that. Uh, I mean, honestly, if the Thor, honestly, the Thor first of all took extra damage because it went ahead of the pack, and then it didn't get properly surrounded by the SCVs. It should have done so much more. Thor fighting the Immortal. This is going to be seeing the uh, second Immortal showing up, though. I'm just gonna be seeing the Marines coming through, SCVs coming in. Uh, I mean, there's just never gonna be a win here for Bomber, right? And it's obviously one base, he's obviously in a lot of trouble. GG and Creator does get the map win to take Jeanette into an ace match. GG's. Suddenly I'm really happy that Rogue lost that game. Suddenly I'm really happy this went to an ace. I wasn't, not that I wasn't happy before, but suddenly we get to cast a bit of Maru in our days. I mean, was not, did not wake up expecting this one. Bottom left hand side, our blue, no sorry, our red Terran player helps if I can do that. I'm too excited to do colors. In the bottom left, our red Terran player from Jin Air Green Wings, their ace. This is Maru. In the top right hand side, our blue Terran player is Bomber. I mean, I feel like you can tell by how excited I am that this was just not expected in the slightest. When do they ever bring Maru out? This is just so unorthodox and so, so unexpected. Really unexpected. Huh. But <laughs> Maru's not even played a regular season game so far. He's not even played a regular season game before now. He literally, this is the first time he showed up. It's in the ace. What the hell? What the actual hell? And Bomber fight Maru off. Oh, Maybe. I feel like it's gonna be tough. Obviously, Maru is really, really good. Double gas opening on both sides of the map. So both players gonna go double gas opening. Bomber, I mean, Team GP already picked up their first point of the T of the season by getting into this ace match. Can they capitalize? Can they take two points by defeating Maru? I, I mean, that's obviously seems like a very, uh, a very, like, far off task, but that's the storyline we've got to talk about here. Team GP are completely overperforming today. And if, <laughs> out of all the teams I thought Jin Air might have to bring Maru out for, Team GP was not the one that I was ever thinking about. I, I genuinely still in shock that Maru just joined this lobby. I, I still can't quite believe it. <laughs> oh, the worst team in the league, bottom of the table, have forced Maru into action. Even Nathanius couldn't get Maru to play in the ace match of the War Chess Team League. <laughs> For love, no money. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's kind of funny uh, when you think about it like that. All right, let's let's get serious. Let's talk about the game. It is a command center down from Maru. Factory is up. 
Uh, same from Bummer. He is also about to expand. So, similar build so far. What is different is there's already a tech lap here from Bummer as he goes for double Reaper setup. Uh, Marachi just went single Reaper into a Hellion. And, uh, sorry, no, he's already on double Reaper. So, his Reaper was just done a bit sooner. Um, his factor is a little later, so he didn't start tech lab. He's going Hellion anyway. And his tech lab will probably come in just a little bit later in this. As that Cyclone is on the way out, we don't mind building from Maru on this bottom side. Starboard on the way as well, next step. So Maru just wasting no time at all, obviously. The thing is, he's not putting a lot of gas into his early setup, so you can get the Starboard a bit faster. You know, a Hellion than a Widow Mine is much cheaper than a Tech Lab than a Cyclone. So Cyclone gets out early from Bomb, and that will keep him pretty safe as we get ourselves into this game number seven. Widow Mine borrows up on the high ground. I'm just going to be seeing a refinery on the third base of Bomber looking to get some Ravens out. No surprises there. would be kind of surprised if Mario didn't take a third cast and get a Raven or two out for himself. What does Bomber have planned for TVT against Mario? I, honestly, I don't even think, uh, you know, Team GP probably even thought about getting Mario at all in this series. I don't think that was going to be part of the preparation in the slightest here. Raven is already building here from Bomber, and just going to be seeing, obviously, the fusions from Maru hanging around on the ramp. Put in mind, a few Marines going to load up, and Maru is going to go boosting out across the upper right-hand side. So, yeah, uh, no Raven just yet, but he will start one up now. He has got that third gas on the low ground going, so... Bomber is just a little bit faster here and there, but Maru with the first little bit of pressure to come in. There's Widowmine Marine Army... Should be able to make its way across and uh, head into this main base in the next few moments for a little bit of pressure. So we'll see how much you can get done with this. He's actually going to go for a fight at the front. He is actually going to have to be a little bit careful. There is a widow mine here that gets a pretty good connection. I don't really like this for Mario. He doesn't really do anything. He doesn't kill off the siege tank. The Widow Mine at the front actually hurts. He loses the Re uh, Reaper and the Hellion, which otherwise might have just been enough to get a little bit more out of this. Lots more damage in the front there. But the Auto Turret coming in as well, though. Bomber makes a good hold, a good defense. And Maru so far, not going to find too much just yet. So no look there just for the moment, as we do see this Medivac backing away back down through the middle of the map. Rax from Bomber building up. Starport going to move over for Reactor, the Command Center. Setting up in the main base also. And there is a uh, third CC from Maru over on the uh, main base. So, we got his third base up and running. Bomber's doing the exact same, pretty much mirrored setups in terms of the timings of things, right? You know, slight difference on racks, etc. here or there, but 3 CC at a similar sort of timing. I expect Stim from Maru to start about now. He is going to put his stop on a reactor, so he will get some Vikings. Already two Vikings on the way up and just going to be having our stims continuing into play. A Marine off to the side gets picked off as well. And a couple of engineering bays building in the back of this natural. So they're going to be up here in just a few moments. Obviously for upgrades. Uh, the upgrades are going to be double upgrades. Bomber only got one engineering base. So that's a bit of a difference between the two of them at the moment. Uh, Maru will end up on better upgrades eventually. But Bomber will take the initial upgrade lead. Everything joining in at the front. All Vikings of Maru continuing to produce. Do you see the third CC going to fly out into position as well? Still have the Viking Raven. Little combo on the left hand side. production has begun is again vikings and ravens setting up from maru in the front we're just going to be seeing this army starting to go forward from bomber being pretty passive since maru initially attacked which put him a little bit behind and bomber has been able to keep that advantage his stim already done he's on a faster combat shield he will be moving across with that plus one advantage 
before the 1 1 upgrades are done of Maru. He will follow up with the second engineering bay and the armory. So you can go plus 2 plus 1 at the same time. He will at least, uh, you know, maintain a, a good attack upgrade lead while also every now and then being behind the armor upgrade. Finds a pretty early depot here. The only problem I really see here for Bomber is that he doesn't have any air control, right? He doesn't have Vikings, so it's very hard for him to really contest this army of Maru at all. More tanks sieging up. Vikings coming forward, Marines and tanks trying to find a way in for Bomber. Not much luck just yet. He does get the flank with the Ravens, though. He's going to get the interference. Matrix is down on the siege tanks. Okay, well, Maru mass auto turrets to set up against this. His Marines running into trouble. His Vikings are going to land, but there's extra Marines showing up from Bomber. Maru's tanks are about to come out of Matrix, though. And Maru is going to get the cleanup. Everything kicked off pretty much immediately there. And Bomber comes out worse for Wes. Well, and now it's the reaction from Maru to really control this fight, even though it started off a little bit badly for him. Yeah, good, good, good figuring out from Maru. Good fix on the situation. That definitely did look to be a little bit problematic, but he was able to uh, to save it. Do you see everything joined up together? This army of Maru readying itself to move out onto the map. I think he's going to try and take some map control after a good win. The big thing is, Bomber lost his tank count, and Maru kept all of his tanks alive, so it's now 7 to 2 siege tanks right now. Pretty big difference. That obviously means if Maru gets a position, it's going to be very difficult for Bomber to break that position down. Matrix goes down, so he can try and bully his way into range of the tanks initially. There's only one tank in play. If there's only one tank, I think Maru doesn't really care about fighting, and he just goes straight in. Medivac has to make a lift off. Maru bringing everything back together once again, and maybe with this Marine tank army can continue forward once more. That's one Raven super low HP still just survived by the skin of its teeth. We do have Marines on the left side from Bomber trying to get a flank in, but. Not finding much just yet. He's about to take uh, the upgrade lead again. And so we weird kind of uh, back and forth thing what we have on this upgrades because of the fact he went for one engineering bay against double. So he has, you know, attack upgrades sooner, but then he trails on the armor upgrades. So he has an attack upgrade lead now, but when the other upgrades finish from Maru, he'll be behind again. Here we go. SCV's pulling it as well. All the Marines from Maru out to the right side. Gives Bomber a chance to clean out the tanks maybe, but not really enough, is it? 14 SCVs going down as well. Well, he is going to start winning this fight because the Marines, like I said, do have the upgrade disadvantage for Maru. Problem is, you've lost 14 workers and you're behind heavily on the economy because of all of this. Bomber does have a fourth in position, but as does Maru, and he's already got SCVs in position on his. So Maru macroing like the god we expect him to be uh, behind this for sure. Well... Two tanks, two liberators, a few extra racks, all from Maru building up, and I really like where it's going for him. Obviously, the SEV advantage is huge. 24 workers difference in the game at the moment. And while the army supplies are currently even, it means this game gets out of control for Bomber real fast. So he has to make a move now. He has to shut down a base or kill a lot of SEVs. Otherwise, he is falling very far behind. He gets intercepted, by the way. A tank and a couple of Marines get picked off as he tries to make his way in over here. No Ravens left, remember, so you can't drop down any Matrixes at this stage. Double Liberator will see jump. The Marines are going to go running in. They're going to grab a tank. The other Marines backing off as well. I'm just going to be seeing these Marines going to get rid of pretty much everything else. A couple Medivacs go down. We're going to be seeing this Orbital. It is going to get blown up as well. Six SCVs, seven SCVs going down. Bomber types GG. And Maru is going to take game seven. Jinnah Green Wings will come out with the victory as uh, Maru comes out and wins.